UConn was their 10th. So it's the double bonus now. Automatic two for Deion Dixon. Jeremy Lamb back in for Roscoe Smith. One of two at the line. One possession game. Napier for the tie. Got it! Cincinnati has two timeouts. Will Nick Cronin call one here? He might let them play it out. Kilpatrick for three. Knocks it down! 2.5 seconds to go. Napier catches in the backcourt, but a timeout call. UConn spends their final timeout. What a shot, though, by the sophomore Sean Kilpatrick to answer and put Cincinnati back on top. And Shabazz Napier, this is the same spot he's hit the two previous threes from. Loves that spot, kicks out the right foot. That's classic Napier. I mean, Napier, just incredible balance off his right hand. But nine and a half to go. Of course, you don't call a timeout. You're playing with house money. You don't want the defense a chance to set. You trust Sean, Sean Kilpatrick. And you throw it in, and he just makes a play. You know, it's funny you say that. You're playing with house money. You're on the road. Don't call timeout. Give a team a chance to get set oh. defensively. Having said that, it seems like nine times out of ten, especially when you've got multiple timeouts, a coach will call a timeout they, there and try and set something they, up. They do, and what do they always run? They run a high ball screen, or they run an ISO set, to which the defense now knows, all right, let's make him go right. Let's double, let's double, or let's discuss exactly how we're going to play that high ball screen. It makes it's over coaching, and it, it's a lot like how you can pick apart Nick Cronin's offense. Like, let's not over coach it. Let's not get too many touches. We got good shooters. We got guys that can make shots for themselves. Let's get you spread as far as we can on the floor and let our players take and make shots, then try and play volleyball with second shots. Remember Monday night. Big Monday is going to Cincinnati. It's going to be Cincinnati at home against Syracuse on Monday night at 7 o'clock. Now, in between now and then, Cincinnati not only with their road game tonight against UConn, they've got a pure road game over the weekend at West Virginia. Boy, could you imagine if Cincinnati is 6-1 in the Big East, having won on the road at UConn and West Virginia back-to-back, -back, and then Monday night take on Syracuse in their gym? Nick Bruno was saying before the game how big that game could be, Andy Katz. Yeah, we were standing there together, Bob, and he said that he thinks the roof's going to come off the place if they beat West Virginia or Connecticut. Now, we did also say that after these four games, this game tonight at West Virginia, home Syracuse, at Rutgers, he's going to learn a lot more about his team, whether or not they can truly contend for a top two finish in the Big East. Yeah, you put that at Rutgers. I mean, Rutgers, I mean, we know UConn's lost there. That's become a house of horrors for some teams in the Big East, the rack I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I, you know, look, you want to go and, and win in Morgantown and slow down Kevin Jones. But regardless, you know, Syracuse comes to town, whether they're undefeated, uh, they'll probably be undefeated. I think they'll beat no Notre Dame. You're going to beat Syracuse by keeping them in the half court, and you got to handle their zone. And, of course, you got to handle all their weaponry offense, especially on that perimeter. Well, if that timeout seemed unusually long, it was because not only did Jim Calhoun call the timeout after the made basket, but then Mick Cronin yeah. spent one of his timeouts as well. So it was basically a double timeout. Two and a half seconds to go, and UConn has to have a three. Now, you probably can't foul because Napier's going to get a running start, and when he catches it, he'll be going towards the basket. Olander acts like a quarterback, gets it into Giffy, length of the court. Off the backboard, that close to being a miracle shot. And instead, it is a big road win for Cincinnati as they come to Gamble and take out the 11th-ranked Huskies. And Niels Giffy probably could have thrown it up to Shabazz Napier, but he might not have gotten a chance to catch and release. That's almost as, that's as close to going in on a three-quarter court shot as you're going to find without it actually going in. What a terrific performance by the Bearcats, though, to take the punch, as we said, counter punch, and survive on the road. Yeah, you know, listen, they're going to go back and think miss free throws if this game is not close. But it still took Shabazz Napier's three big threes down the stretch to push them once again to the brink. And Sean Kilpatrick ends up hitting an absolute dagger. And that's the difference for the Bearcats. Andy Katz is with the winning coach.